I've been using the Prestige A3 Plus R DTF printer for a while now, and right now I'm noticing that my prints are getting kind of dull. I know on my DTG printer, the print head is exposed and it's easy to get to um, by just pressing a few buttons on the DTG machine, but this machine, the print head is too close to the bottom where it prints and you can't access it, right? So you can clean it. And I know from having printers that cleaning the print head is essential in to the continuation of getting the vibrant print. So um, with the help of my team member, Lovelyn Frazier, thank you, Lovelyn, I appreciate that so much. She showed me how to remove the print head from my DTF machine and clean it and I want to share that with you guys. Give me a thumbs up, let's get into this video, show you guys what you need to do to clean the print head of your Prestige A3 Plus R or printer similar to this printer. Let's go. I had to take off my hat. Let me get my little cart in place right here. Now let me pump this thing up because I'm going to move that from here to there. If you don't have a cart, just make sure you can see inside of your printer. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get that thing, put it in maintenance mode. Actually, you know what? Let me get it from here to here first. I don't know if the cord is long enough. Yeah, it is. All right, so I'm going to bring this thing over here like so. All right. Oh, the Prestige is a little bit heavy, guys. All right, and keep in mind the power um, switch is right here in the back of the machine, in the back of the machine right here, because we're gonna have to hit that. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit so we can see it. All right, there we go. Now we can have access to this area and work on it, and I can get some shots for you guys. All right, cool. All right, so now that we got our printer out, we got it powered on. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in maintenance mode. So I'm gonna press this button right here, second button right here. Press it, release it. All right, let the print head move around a little bit. Slides over, then it stops right there. All right, see that light flashing? All right, we're good to go. So now I'm gonna pick this up right here. And with a little bit of force, not a lot, with a little bit of force, you're gonna push this over. Should be some resistance, but now it's pushed over. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my printer off. I wanna turn it off so I don't mess up any of these components right here. So I'm gonna to need to remove this. I'm gonna to need to access some screws down in here, all right? So I'm just gonna reach around back, around back right here where my finger is, and flick the switch right here in the back. Cuts the power to the printer. Printer doesn't have any power. Safe to work on it, all right? so. Let's get to accessing these screws right here so I can take this print head out. All right, we're gonna need to remove these uh, ink cartridges first. All right, let's do it. So now that we're all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna start to take out all of my ink cartridges. Just sit them to the side. Take all of them out. Release, 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 release. Make sure you don't get your fingers tangled up. Release, release, release. All right, now that that's out of the way, there's three screws in here. One here, one here, and one here. Let me show you guys. I feel like you guys can see that, but there's a screw right here, in this corner right here. There's a screw right here, in this corner right here, and there's a screw in this corner right here. All right, get your, right here, right here, and right here. Get yourself a precision Phillips screwdriver for this move. On Amazon, you can get a Phillips precision screwdriver with a bunch of different tips right here for taking apart like computers and stuff like that and but get yourself one of those anyway let's begin to move the screws this is also magnetic so as I remove the screws it should just um, just uh, be magnetized to the screwdriver alright so that's that one's out and this is not magnetic okay don't worry about it we got a magnet all right, so take that one out. Take this one out. All right, that's not magnetic <laughs> at all. All right, and take this one out. I got a magnet though, so I'll go get my magnet. All right, so all three of them are released. This print head should come up, and it does come up. All right, but let me get my let me get my screws first. I want to secure my screws before I lose them. All right, I got my magnet right here. When you're working with embroidery machines or anything with small screws, you definitely want one of these. So make sure you get one of these too. Grab my screw. 
grab that screw, set it to the side, and the last screw there in the corner. Doesn't want to come up, but as I lift the print head up, I'll just grab it. All right, push this up right here and grab it right there. And we can now access the print head and clean the bottom of it. All right, this is our print head. I'm just going to wipe around the edges of it. It actually does not look that bad, guys. Let me focus on this print head so you guys can see it better. Focus, 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 out of focus, in focus. All right, there you go. All right, so now I'm going to just get a lint free wipe and I'm just going to wipe around the print head. It's actually not that bad at all. Oh, with some buildup right here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely that needs to be clean. Around here, around here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely needs to be clean. So let me clean that print head off right now. Let me get some cleaning solution and a lint free wipe and clean that print head off. Let me focus so you guys can see that print head a little better. All right, y'all see it? You see that print head. All right, so I'm going to get some cleaning solution and lint free wipe and a lollipop. All right, so I got my lint free wipe. I'm going to dip my lollipop in some cleaning solution right here. Some ink head print, printer cleaning solution for the Prestige A3 Plus R. It came with it. And I'm just going to loosen this debris up right here. Rub it around here to loosen this up. See how that's coming off nice and easy? It's not caked on too bad. It can still come off nice and easy. All right, be careful with the print head. They say you don't want to get this on a print head, but in my experience, it's okay to get it on a print head as long as you wipe it off with the lint free wipe and get the print head nice and clean again. All right, so I'm just going around here, loosen up this debris all around here. It's caked up, caked up nicely in this area. All right, all right. If yours needs a little elbow grease, then so be it. All right, clean up around here. All right, and now put this down, grab my lint free wipe, and just clean that up. Clean all that up. Nice clean print head. Print should be nice and vibrant after this. Get all that up. All that solution that you put down, make sure it's all cleaned up. All right. Now that's looking nice and clean on the sides. Nice and clean on this side. Nice and clean. Easy, easy fix. Nice and clean. And there, guys, there has to be ways to access this on like regular printers too, so you can clean your print heads, like print printers that you've had for a long time. If they they all start getting caked up because they all print and print and print and print. And if you can clean the print head, you can save these printers. All right. And they say not to wipe it, but go over it lightly. I go over it nice and lightly. All right. All right. Get a fresh one and go over it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fresh, clean um, lollipop. And I'm going to do it once more to get anything that I might have left and a fresh new lint free wipe and I'm going to do that same thing over again alright so I'm going to do look at this look at that crazy alright got me a new lollipop dip it in the print head cleaner alright do that same thing this time I'm going to go buck wild and do what they told me not to do I want this thing pristine alright boom 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 Boom, boom, boom. All around here, getting up all that leftover debris. Make sure you don't get it too damaged because these are wires in here. You don't want to get it too wet. But see right here? Got some stuff right here that I might have left on there. It's coming up. I want to get all that off. All right. All right. So now I'm going to grab another lint free wipe. Clean that up and then we can screw that back down. Alright, do this part very carefully. Do not, like I said, do not get this print head too wet because you don't want the, the you know the, the liquid seeping down in the hair and all that stuff and damaging something, getting onto a wire or mechanism that's not supposed to be um, wet. Alright, then you turn your printer on and the, the uh, moisture is on something that's not supposed to be moist. Alright, so there you go. 
nice and clean. I'm going to run a few print head cleans, a few nozzle checks, and then we'll be good to go. Now let me put this back in place. I believe it goes like this. Yep. That's the corner. That, that, yep. Ooh, let, see how dirty that is right there? I'm going to clean around here too. Oh yeah, around there definitely needs to be cleaned because I see a big chunk of ink right there that needs to be cleaned. So I'm just going to, with that same, got people who <laughs> driving around listening to very, very loud music. So right around the print head housing needs to be cleaned also. So I'm reaching down in there and cleaning around the print head housing area because filthy, oh my God, caked up. Grab another lint-free wipe. Caked up. I didn't even notice that until I was trying to put this thing back down. Wondering where the ink was coming from. Ooh, don't want to do that. Don't want to damage our print head. Oh, big pieces of ink right there. Big pieces of ink right there. Score. Major score. All right, lint-free wipe. Fresh new one. Clean up around there. Get those big pieces of ink up. Clean all that up. All right, let me get this out of the way so I can get that off of my off of my film. Get that off of there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we scored big time. Nice cleanup. Nice cleanup. Very nice. All right. Alright, now let's work on putting this thing back. And I'll let you know, guys, how I put it back. Alright, let me fiddle with it a little bit to figure this out. Definitely goes this way, because this part was down here in that corner. So let me see. This way. And it came straight up. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's easy. Just make sure when you're putting it down, this is towards this area. And then it sits right down. All right, so now, got to get the screws back in, which shouldn't be difficult at all because our precision Phillips, it should stay on there. All right, there we go. Put the first one back in. All right, that was simple enough. Easy peasy. Our camera started to tilt a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. Camera started to tilt a little bit. Got the first screw back in then though so put that on there make sure it's nice and in and then put it right in that hole right there gotta have a pretty steady hand and then twist that in that's cool we got the second screw in all right that's good almost home free this camera's starting to move though guys camera's starting to move because i have it i have this mounted on something pretty weird so sorry about that ah, trying to tighten it up there we go all right nice and tight all right, last but not least, the last screw. I'm going to put that on here. Pardon me if you can't see, guys. I'm sorry. But that's going to go right in this corner down here. Boom. Perfect. Dropped it right in there. Screw that into place. And now we can start putting our inks back. All right. All right, so let's start putting our inks back. And we got to make sure we put them in the right spot. All right, so this one, the yellow, that goes in right there. Boom. All right. Black right next to the yellow. All right. And the labels right here, just in case you, just in case you can't see it. All the labels are right, right above it. All right, so you can't miss it. Yellow, black, white. All right. Another white. All right. Make sure I get that in there. All right. Okay. Mienta. All right. So this probably wasn't like this, but it's all right. As long as it's able to do what it can do. And then la blue. Okay. Get that down in there. In that channel where it's supposed to be. All right, now we got everything set back up. All right, now what we're going to do, make sure it's seated good, is turn our printer on, do a couple nozzle checks, nozzle cleanings, and stuff like that, and then we're good to go. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do my weekly maintenance, clean this area right here with the lollipop, and um, 
with a uh oh yeah you guys can't see what i'm what i'm pointing to all right yeah this is what i was trying to show you this is the maintenance station is right to the right of the carriage i'm gonna go ahead and lollipop all of that and clean all of it off fresh new lollipop all right and just go and go ahead and clean up all around here clean up all around here this is our weekly maintenance and we also have to flick this up and clean off the wiper blade all right because the wiper blade after we do our head cleanings run a few head cleanings is going to wipe run across the wiper blade to wipe off any access excess um liquid that we might have on that screen so to do that we just got to flick this up a little challenging to get this up but it comes up if you got a good nail then you can get it up all right so you just got to reach in there and flick this thing up with your nail and boom here he is here it is right there see how dirty that is wipe all the gunk off of that wiper right there you know, with your uh, solution, get that nice and clean. Because that is what wipes off on your print head. Alright, so get that nice and clean. Get some solution in there on that thing. And don't forget, you got to put this thing back down. You got to put this thing back down after you're done. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off real good. Wipe it off with a lint-free wipe after I'm done. Don't pull on it. Don't tug on it. Be very, very careful with this part because it is rubber. And I think it can break off. You know. And wipe off all around here where you cleaned up just now. Alright. Get all that excess fluid out. Make sure it's not caked up, baked up. Use another lollipop if you need to. To get in this crevice right here. If you need to. But as you guys can see, that is now clean it's now clean all right so i'm going to flip this back down all right and wipe off everything else and we're good to go all right good to go to power it back on and get busy once again all right so let's uh let's set this thing back up baby go ahead and release your kickstand on the prestige a3 plus r and let that hood down Every time I do something like this to a printer, I feel like I've extended the life of my printer or I, I feel like I made it new again. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and power this thing on. Turn that power switch on. Then turn the power button on right there. Boom. And it's going to go ahead. The, the head is moving back into this place now. All right, so it's going to go ahead and do its thing the way it powers on and stuff and go ahead, go through its paces. Then I'm going to plug in my computer and I'm going to do a couple nozzle checks and a couple print head cleanings and stuff like that. And we're going to run a test print. We're going to run a nozzle check pattern then we're going to run a test print. Alright, and we should be good to go. Alright. Now that I have a solid light right here, I know we're ready to plug in our computer and do my nozzle checks and my head cleaners and stuff like that and we should be good to go. Alright, let's try it out. Printer's doing his thing right now. Doing a head cleaning and stuff like that. Flushes some ink through. Doing a few things. So when you're printing with a DTF and you're doing like a, uh, with film rather, and you're doing a nozzle check pattern, you can't really see it. It's almost like you got to put white paper behind here to see it, but I can see it fine and the, uh, the nozzle check came back fine. So I'm going to go ahead and try to print some DTFs and see if we have any difference. Let's, let's try it. Now guys, there's only one way to check and see if your DTF printer is printing any better than when you first started off. And that is to print something. So guys... We're about to send something to print. Let us go ahead and do that right now. Print. Let's see how it prints. I also adjusted a little bit of settings to make things a little bit brighter because my prints were looking a little light, a little on the light side. So we're going to see how it does this time around. But it should print a whole lot better because the print head is clean, nozzle check pattern came out great, and everything is just better overall. So we'll see how these prints come out, these next few prints come out. So far it's looking a lot more vibrant to me, but we'll see, alright? Alright, let me go ahead and see what this one came out like. 
All right, guys, so I ran a couple prints for color accuracy on this client's design, and it comes to, I come to find out now that it wasn't, the reason the Prestige was printing out not the color it was supposed to be, it seemed like it was dull, it wasn't the Prestige, it was actually the client's image. How do I know this? Because I went ahead and I printed out the image on a regular piece of paper from my Epsom ET15000, and it came out, it turns out that it's not the way the client emailed it to me. It's not the way the print looks on the email. They said they made it on Apple Color, the image on Apple Color. So I'm assuming that the colors are different from, from Apple Color Create or whatever. I don't know what program that is to a regular printer. So these two are supposed to be yellow right here. They're not. The blues are different and everything. So my Prestige actually printed out what it was supposed to print out and it was the client's file. That's the reason why the Prestige wasn't printing out exactly like um, the Prestige had me feeling like it might not have been, been as vibrant as I thought. So I just wanted to clear that up for you guys. I printed this up on a regular printer and got the same results as I did when I printed out on my Prestige. So, But nonetheless, this was a good video to show you guys how um, the Prestige prints out. Um, how to clean the print head on a Prestige A3 Plus R, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked and if you found any value. And please, guys, share this video out with your friends because they might have similar issues. If you're in the market to buy a Prestige A3 Plus R, use my heat transfer house affiliate link in the description down below or my um, AA Print Supply affiliate link down in the description below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video valuable. It took me a little bit of effort to make this. I wanted to give you guys some in-detail stuff. So thank you. It's your boy, Alan Wade. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Turn up that. Crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby?